Hello, Hi. everybody. Welcome back to our channel, Web Big Pop Big. We usually make music, but now we make YouTube videos yeah, sometimes. Do. Sometimes. Today, uh, we are at the end of 2022. So it's true. been a good year for live music. We've seen more than our fair share of bands. Between us, we think we've seen over 200 bands, which is a I lot of bands. So we thought we'd do a roundup of the best ones. Obviously, music is very subjective and... Uh, because we've seen so many bands, like everyone, I don't think we've seen a bad band this year, like, well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think we've seen any bands that everyone in the world would say all that shit. No, yeah, it's so subjective that like, you know, put together a list of 10 bands that, and like artists that we saw this year that will stay with us for a very long time. We saw some really um, big bands this year as well, but we're not going to mention them. Yeah. Obviously saying Harry Styles was amazing, obviously saying My Chemical Romance was amazing. Yes. We also saw Elton John. We saw Ed Sheeran this We did, year, we saw Ed Sheeran. Uh, he was quite good as well. Right? He was quite, he wouldn't have made me top 10. <laughs> no. But still, he was very was good. Right. It was a, a nice time, I yeah. enjoyed myself. It's a good so day. yeah, and there's also bands like, the one of the best days of my year was seeing Carly Rae Jepsen this year, but like I've seen her before, you yeah. know, like it was, it, it like, wasn't, obviously, yeah, yeah like was she was fucking amazing, yeah. but like it hasn't made the list just because not not every band on here, I think most of them we, we saw for the first time, but even so, it's <clears throat> like it kind of wears off a little bit, doesn't it? When yeah. you've already seen someone, this is like something that we weren't expecting maybe to be so good, or like yeah, it just took us by surprise a bit, or maybe we've been waiting a really long time for that kind of thing i'm going to start with a band uh, that i'd literally never heard of never in my life had i heard of them um we went to see darwin days me and two of my friends mighty and chris we, we went to leeds to see darwin days without um, me without i know i know i felt really bad <laughs> but it was like you didn't want to come be there like you couldn't afford I did it, want to come. it yeah. was just like he was playing Riverside. Yeah, that was in Newcastle. Newcastle. And then, so and we, we were like, no, we're not going there. Um, if you know, if you're local, you'll probably know. If not, get to know. Yeah. He got there in time for the support, which we always do. Um, and they were so good. I hadn't heard of them before, but now I've seen them. I hear, I hear about them quite a lot. Yeah. And I don't know whether maybe it was just, I didn't notice before. Like, if you don't know a band and you just see their name a lot, you might not like pick up on it but now that i know who they are i see on them on quite a lot of bills and they're doing really really well uh they're called youth sector when i saw i just like googled them before um the show and they just looked like it just looked like an indie band you Big know boy. what i mean like it just looked like yeah like i, I don't know like you just judge, judge, judge a book by its cover don't you like i saw it and just thought oh <laughs> they'll, they'll probably be fine like i can't imagine it being bad but it didn't look like anything that i was going to be excited about um, but they were so good, like the performance was amazing, so much energy, they're very like, it is like indie pop, but it's quite 80s, like they remind me a lot of talking heads, like that kind of vibe, they all wear matching suits, the bass player was like so good, like so, just so in the pocket, so tight, um, all of them were really good, and the keyboard player, I uh, um, put on my story that looked like Napoleon Dynamite <laughs> when he does the dance, and they replied to my story. I didn't even tag them in it. It was just I tagged them in the next one, and they must have like looked back yeah. at my story. And I was so embarrassed. They replied, being like, "Ha, oh, his girlfriend's really laughing at this." And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "I was like, oh no, what have I done?" But like, it, it was the like, the performance he was doing, like a lot of this kind of dancing, <laughs> and it was very Napoleon Dynamite. But they were really really good did it make sense with down days kind of um uh that wasn't as indie as i was expecting right um because down days is very indie like yeah. it's kind of an anomaly for me because indie music's not like my favorite genre and um, because i do find it quite boring a lot of the time and quite repetitive um but down days is something a, a bit different i think um and i've loved them for so many years and it did make sense for them um it, i mean it definitely didn't sound like Down Daisy's music. Yeah. But in terms of like, I don't know, like the energy was kept up high the entire time. And I don't know, they just had like something, just something about them. Yeah. Like there was a lot of personality and I don't know, I just thought the songs were really well written. They were very catchy. Like I had them in my head after we left and we were, weren't even there for them. You know what I mean? Um, so I followed them on social since then. They're doing South by Southwest next yeah, year. So like they're doing really well. Um, and if they're back in the northeast, or if they're on any festival lineups that I'm going to, I'll definitely go and see them again. I do listen to them, like I put them on and I listen to them, but I don't know what it was about their live performance that like 
was so memorable. Yeah. If I'd listened to that before going to see them, I think I'd be like, oh yeah, it's like nice. Like yeah, it's a nice song or pleasant. whatever. But because I've seen them live and like, I don't know, sometimes that just is the case. Like yeah. you see someone live and you're just like, oh, right, I get, it, get now. it Yeah. Like that is like it's something that I would put on and listen to now. I think we're one of those bands. Yeah. Not that I think we're like... Like that that is just nice to listen to and we're not necessarily like that on the phone. <laughs> but like it's not sometimes it takes seeing a live performance to, to, be like, to get oh, it. And I right. do think that we're one of them. So yeah. I don't think it's a bad thing at all. I think it's just like it's just something to consider. From isn't a, it? from like a perspective of someone in a band as well, like I'd I'd much rather be better live. Yeah. Than oh, yeah 100%. Like that's to me that's not an issue. Like if someone yeah. said like, Oh, I didn't really get it until I saw you live, yeah. like I'd be like, Oh, that's good. Because yeah. that means that we're doing something like live is what we do like yeah. and i think for a lot of bands that's like where we like make money and it's where we like make fans and stuff yeah. so like i'd much rather be better live than on record and i think it is still really good on record as yeah. well but seeing it live was completely different and i'll 100 percent go and see them again next is kate nash it was like i would say probably the biggest person on this list By like the, the most yeah. famous um we've been trying to say kate nash for years. Yeah. It just wasn't happening. For different reasons, it just didn't work out. We booked this show to see her in Manchester because we were already in Manchester to see um, My Chemical Romance. Mm -hmm. And then it just worked Made out so that much the sense. day after. was It was her show like on the tour that she was doing in Manchester. So we were like, and she also wasn't coming to Newcastle. So we were like, okay, well, that makes more sense than traveling somewhere else. Um, and I remember when we booked it, I was like nervous. Yeah. I was like, what's going to happen? Yeah. What's going to stop us from going to see her this we time? We tried to see her like three times. Yeah. And like it was oh. cancelled for pandemic or personal reasons or yeah. whatever. Like it just never came to fruition. And we were like, something's going to happen and we're not going to see her. Yeah. But it was it so never worth did. the wait. It was so worth the wait. She, as soon as we came out, we were like, that. that's definitely, it was one of the best gigs of the year at that point, which was like in May. But then it stayed that way. Yeah. Like she was so good that like nothing else has knocked it off of the list. Like the uh, uh, one of my favorite parts about the whole uh, gig was her band. Yeah. Like everyone, there was only so there was her, and then there were three other people on stage. Yeah. I think. And I know like they had tracks and stuff, but like not a lot. And the amount of sound that they made, it was like a full fucking. They were amazing. It was like, as if there were like ten people on stage, and yeah. it, it wasn't like like I said, there was some track, but it wasn't that. It was just that like the the way that they played their instruments, the parts of the songs that they chose to play, like mm -hmm. from the records and stuff, it was just unbelievable. I thought the set list was a good mix of like old and new. Yeah. Um also that gig is memorable because someone got proposed oh. proposed to who we was stood like right next to. So it was the support act that night was called Patrick St. James. Um and he proposed to his boyfriend so Kate Nash played birds and then she was like, oh, I want to like thank different people and she thanked him and then she was like, also like, I think he's got a question to ask his boyfriend and then we turned around and he was on, hey, he was on one day. We were like in tears and they were right next to us. It was amazing. It was, it was so magical. lovely. I'll literally never forget that. So that made the gig even better. The crowd were like pretty weird. It was kind of funny. Like yeah. the people who we were stood next to were a bit nuts, but um, they asked for Mariella. Mariella? Mm -hmm. It's like, that didn't sound right there when I said it. <laughs> yeah, they asked for her to play, to play Mariella, and she did. And it was amazing. It was so good. It, uh, like, one of the best gigs of my life, I think. Ever. That it show. was so good. It was, like, just everything. That I think the fact that we've waited for so long, mm -hmm. and then we finally got to say that, and, like, she would never be a disappointment, but, like, there was just... There was like, no way that would disappoint no, anyone in the crowd. Like, she... I don't know how she all, how old she is specifically, but I know she's like in her thirties. Yeah, like she's not. In, she's been doing this since she was so young, and like you can tell that she's like, like she's still got so much energy. Mm -hmm. She's like not that being in your thirties is fucking old, but no. like she's not like a sixteen year old anymore. And also, like, I mean? like a lot of the time when you say people <clears throat> that have been doing it for a really long time, like they've like fallen out of love with it, yeah. or like you can just tell become, that like jaded. In yeah, some way. exactly. Like Kate was just having the best yeah. time like she was such like in terms of putting on a show it was such a show even though there wasn't it wasn't there wasn't like anything to it it was just the band no, playing the song. Stage, yeah. but like it was just amazing like it was one of the best shows i've ever yeah. been to a vocal so was ridiculous and she but she was like jumping around stage like i remember at the end of mariella she ran around in circles yeah. and then ended up on the floor but then when you watch the video back our vocal is still there Perfect. Yeah, perfect. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, 
she was just unbelievable. And if you can, if you do get the chance to see her live, I definitely would recommend it. Even if you're not like, if you only know like the older stuff, because obviously that's like Foundations is like a classic. Um, I would still recommend going because it was like, I don't know how anyone could not have a good time. At I know, that I think it Nashville's a lot of festivals. So if you're at a yeah. festival and she's on, just, it's just worth it. Mm-hmm. It's just worth going and, and watching because she was just amazing. Because I am so bitter. I went to Dublin this year. Me and my boyfriend went to Dublin. Um, we actually went for the Hella Mega Tour for uh, Weezer for our Boy Green Day. And that was amazing. It was so good. But that's not what I'm going to talk about. The night before that, we were just like in Dublin and just wanted something to do. So we were like just Googling like what shows are on, what gigs are on in uh, Dublin. We went to just like find a local band to go and watch. Um, and we went to see, she was actually on tour from America. She was called Colleen Green and she was really, really good. Really enjoyed it. There was a local support on called, one second. There was a, there was a local support opener in the show called Janksy and they were really good as well. But the guy in the middle gave a performance I will never forget it for <laughs> as long as I live. It was fucking mental, right? Like, I'm not joking, it was nuts. And he used one of the best phrases I've ever heard in my whole life. Because it wasn't very busy, there was probably like 20 people in the room. <laughs> that like, was it was, I know, there was like no one there. It was like a really small crowd of people. And they were mainly there for like the first fun. Yeah. So obviously they were local. Um, and I honestly really enjoyed them as well. Like, I still follow them on social media and stuff too. But like, you can't nothing compared to yeah. like a poor Colleen Green I'm gonna go on after this bloke his name was Ben Katzman and he was absolutely unhinged completely <laughs> unhinged and he said one of my favorite phrases that I've heard this year he was like I'm not here to rock at you I'm here to rock with you so it was like true. so true so he was like really good at getting everyone involved and he had like he was really like he was a weird bloke I won't lie like he was very spiritual and he was asking people what like the star sign was and stuff like it was that kind of person and he like had really specific songs about like I remember there was one about his mom and it was like about something that his mom had said to him one time and he explained the story I can't even remember what it was but he explained the story beforehand and yeah. he was like she said this thing to me and then it got to the chorus and the chorus was just that, that, <laughs> that, that, that lyric phrase, and it was yeah. so like like n- like I don't know, just so specific, like yeah. <laughs> nailed on exactly what he'd said. He wrote a song about what he told us he wrote a song about. <laughs> and it was he was he said before that he was like, My mum's Capricorn, uh, and she like gets shit done. And then it got to the that chorus was. and it was like, I'm a Capricorn, I'm getting shit done. Like it was just exactly what he said, and it, we were crying with laughter. Like I don't think it was supposed to be funny, but like he was just really funny, like it was such good vibes. And like uh it because no one really knew who this Colin Green was either, and she was also really good. I really enjoyed her. Um, she's got like loads of monthly distance and stuff, but it was just not a very busy gig, and everyone was there for the opening act. Um, he just did a really good job of like making people want to stay. Yeah. Like people didn't leave early because they watched that and they were like, "Well, I'm not. What the fuck's <laughs> coming next?" And I will never forget it. I'll honestly never forget it. He was just soloing. He was doing push-ups on stage, <laughs> running around in circles, climbing the walls, screaming at people, like having conversations with the audience, like as songs were happening. Yeah. And like his laptop nearly died at one point. We had to go and plug it in, and it was just absolutely unhinged. But it was so good like if if he was back in the uk there was there's no stop me from going to say it again i love when people go that hard when there's barely anyone there oh because that's we, that was it we yeah. were, i was looking around there was like no one there, there was like no, it was like a really like, personal experience you know that he's doing that because that's who he is as mm-hmm. a person and like he wants to have a good time yeah like, that's why he's he had doing the, oh he had the best time <coughs> he had the absolute he, no one has ever like had that. a better time at doing anything at any point but it's in just life. so genuine isn't yeah. it so we played a festival this year called generate alive someone else who played that festival was ruth lyon who is local to us mm-hmm. but for some reason neither of us had ever seen her before mm-hmm. um i've listened to her stuff before and i liked it and stuff but I just i don't know why it just had never lined up for us to go and see her um and i'm so glad we managed to to like stay around to see her because she was unbelievable mm-hmm. she's very like so like i was kind of like entranced by her yeah like when she's on stage it's like all uh, like especially when she's performing like when she's singing and stuff it's like all you can pay attention to is her like she's got a beautiful voice her songs are um lovely to listen to she talks about uh like she's a disabled artist and she talks about that quite a lot which is 
really cool. And um, you just don't say enough of it. No, definitely not. And that, but like in a venue like that, we were. It was at um boiler shop in Newcastle, and like a venue of that size is like obviously it's going to be fairly accessible because it's like a big bit. Like you have to be. Um, and it really made me think about. Um, how inaccessible loads of the gigs we go to are, mm-hmm. like smaller gigs and stuff. Well, we just and don't even think about nah, it because we don't have. It doesn't we, affect us because we're fucking privileged. Yeah. And don't and it like just seeing her like obviously I've thought about that kind of stuff before, but seeing her talk about it is like makes you think about it. But that was that wasn't the most interesting part of our performance. Like she is just unbelievable, and um, I know she's played South by Southwest. Before. Yes, she did that this year. They yeah, this year. she's done some mental stuff. She gets played on um, Radio One all the time, but like she should be bigger than she is. Yeah, um, she's very underrated. Yeah, for our area definitely would say that. Um, if you can get the chance to go and see her, I definitely would. She's one that's like not like I don't listen to her music all the time. I won't lie, but it's like I would definitely go and see her if if she's playing again. Name yeah. me, I would definitely go and see her. You know where she'd be really really good to see the Sage. Oh yeah, I agree. And like she's another one, like Ruth's been doing it for years and years, like in other bands and stuff, and this is just like under her own name mm-hmm. now. Um, but you can tell like she's so professional. Yeah. The, the, like everything about the show was just like perfect. Yeah. It was it so was good. Very very tight. Mm-hmm. Like the, every harmony that was sung was completely spot just on. Just spot on. Yeah. They all knew what they were doing all the time. Yeah, didn't they? and like that the festival was like one day. It was like one day, one venue. I think it was like ten artists or something like that on. She was on like the middle of the day. Yeah. Like it wasn't as if she was headlining on the day or anything like that. It was just like a random performance in the middle of the day, and everyone there was just like I think if you ask people there, like what did you enjoy the most? I think Ruth, most of yeah. the people would say Ruth was just captivating. Like she was just amazing. That's the word. The, for the set yeah. was just fantastic. Like there's no other word for it except just really good. Yeah, she's really mid. really good. Would say again. Yeah. Haven't seen her since. No. Nah. One literally only seen her that one time. Yeah. Katie. Okay didn't get to see this next <laughs> band again um they're called little quirks and they're actually from australia basically they were doing like a big uk tour i think their agents must be over here or something but they don't have that they have, they've only got like a few thousand followers and stuff it's they're not like a big band or anything and i'd never heard of them before um, and our friend ben who does the live stuff at independent in sunderland had messaged and being like do you want to come to this show like we've, we've got some door spaces available um, and one of our friends was opening the show Holly was playing first on and stuff. So we were like, yeah, okay, we'll go down, see what they're about. And again, just went in with like no expectations. I like, had never listened to them before or anything like that. And they were absolutely amazing. Like one of the best live shows that by far that I've seen this year, easily that I've seen this year. And it's like three, the, the main band is like three girls and the two sisters and a cousin, I think. It's like all family. And then they've got... Um, two guy session players that play with them as well so five all together and it's like very like upbeat country folky pop music really and uh like there's a banjo and there's just Love all that. sorts of like just such good vibes they were wearing like matching abba style cat suits which just tells you everything that you need to know. And like they would just they, they just radiated like joy and it was so good. They didn't have a cover actually. And wow. yeah, and everyone was dancing. There wasn't that many people there, but everyone was dancing and it was just such a good time. Um and it was really cool that like they've managed to make up like all the way from Australia and they've yeah. managed to make it work. They came over here, they'd obviously never been at Sunderland before. <laughs> there was like a room full of people that were like wanting to see them and excited to see them and it was just a really good night. And then a couple of days later, we played Twisterella in uh, Middlesbrough and they headlined that show, um, that festival. And they were last on. We'd been there from like, like 11 o'clock in the morning or something. And they didn't play it until I think it was 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. Like they didn't go on stage till like half 10, 11 o'clock at night. And we were just <laughs> fucked. Like we just do couldn't do it. Like physically couldn't do it, which is such a shame because I would I would have gone and seen them again. There were I know really, loads really of people good. were going to see them and weren't disappointed. Yeah, like loads of people said afterwards they were one of the best of the whole day. Yeah, and Twisterella has a very strong lineup, yeah. so they must have been. It was unreal. just it's just so much fun. Like the 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 songs I I don't know like the, I wouldn't say they're like particularly catchy or anything like that. It's it's not 
it was more them yeah. like they were so good and their voices were amazing harmonies were great um the drummer she was absolutely sick like she was so good i don't know like we spoke to them afterwards and stuff and their personalities were just lovely and everything about them were just really great and i hope that they get to come back over soon because we're not going to be in australia no. anytime soon we won't catch but them there. no we we're not going to catch <laughs> them there but if they come if they ever came back i would 100% make a point of going to see them um, because we, I don't know when the next time yeah. that they'll be back is. I'm so glad that we just like took a chance. Like we would just weren't doing anything that night and thought, okay, fine, we'll we'll just see what it's all about. Went in with absolutely no expectations and they just completely blew us away. That was so good. Next is a band called Animal Byproducts, which is an awful name. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very interesting name and obviously it sticks in your mind, but like when I think about it, <laughs> Animal byproducts. Oh, come on. Come on. But, um, we saw them. This is another band that we shared um, a stage with this year at Mouseville, which is a festival put on by the local band Mouses every year. And we've been wanting to play it for a very long time. Yeah. So we were very excited. And But I hadn't really like looked at the rest of the lineup. I, I we were know, just I excited just, to play Mouseville. Yeah, I, was just, I didn't really give a fuck about mm-hmm. Susanna. I was just excited to be there and excited to like stick around and there was another girl as well who uh, made tears yeah she, she was, was really good that yeah. day there were, it was just a it was a great day in general but the standout for me was definitely um animal byproducts they're kind of like um how the hell do you describe them they're like they sing with accents mm-hmm. it's kind of like indie punk it's very diy way. very diy yeah there was a trumpet there mm-hmm. It was just brilliant. Their voices were very, like, not necessarily, like, the most melodic, but that was a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and their performances were just, like, very, like, stand here and sing my songs. But, like, that was, again, like, a really good thing. They were dressed really cool as well. I feel like that was part of it. Like, yeah. I just enjoyed the way they looked. They just had, like, shorts and vests on, and I just loved the way that it looked. One of them um, had a vest on that said, Bum Boy. Bum Boy. <laughs> Love that. It was, it was just great. Like, the performance in general was amazing. And I remember, like, we watched them. I again went in with no expectations we watched them and i was like that is my, like my new favorite brand yeah. they were unbelievable and then i went on their instagram to follow them and i had like 200 followers and i was like i thought you were going to be famous mm-hmm. like they were that good that i genuinely like i know how this industry works like there were lots of amazing artists that don't have any followers but like just the way the performance was and the way they handled themselves on stage like i genuinely thought that they were like a, a bigger like a Fine. good book and for mouse. Yeah, like that's know. what I because I, I mean, stay from mouse is like he, they do book big people. Like I just thought that that was the way that it was going to be, and it wasn't. And um, we spoke to them after, and they were like really, really lovely people. One of the performances that's really stuck out to me this year, like if they were ever coming back here, I would definitely go and see yeah. them. Um, they kind of like they did remind me of the front bottoms, like in their earlier days. So obviously, I would like them. My mum wouldn't like them. No. I say that. I, I like to read things on whether my mum would or wouldn't like them. I don't know. My mum like might, like might give them a chance, I think. Because my mum mm. like, doesn't hate the front bottoms. No. So, I don't know. Like, if, you, if you're into, like, the front bottoms, Martha, that yeah. kind of DIY vibe. You would like You would by-products. definitely like animal byproducts. One of them was wearing a Martha t-shirt. Yeah, they were so true. Yeah. They were like, you ain't going on tour with them. Yeah. And then they bought a ticket right in front of our eyes. Yeah. That's how, so, that's why we're BFFs forever. Yeah. Uh, the next band on the list are a band that we saw at Waves Festival in Sunderland this year. They played in the Peacock. I'd, I'd heard of them before. And from what other people had said about them, like, I just didn't expect them to be my no. thing as such. I thought they were going to be a bit boring, to be honest. Like, I thought they were just going to be very, like, like something indie Something we'd rock. seen before. Yeah, yeah, like, but, and I kind of was <clears throat> that, but also not at the same time. Uh, they're called Declan Welsh and the Decadent West. It is such a mouthful. Probably mouthful. Um, but yeah, it was a really good day of bands in general. Like Waves is one of the best new festivals in the country probably at the moment. And this was only its second year. Uh, Declan Welsh and his Decadent West <laughs> are from uh, Glasgow, I think, in Scotland. They're very Scottish. Very Scottish. Very Scottish. It when makes he was me laugh. T- when he was talking, yeah. we were like having to really what concentrate as to what he was saying. But like, I think 
we he, he made a joke about it on stage of being like I bet you get that all the time as well because <laughs> like we both talk quite quickly so they were they just were very surprising a, yeah. a real surprise a very good surprise that we really enjoyed he um, was just very likable wasn't very he very likable he the was, whole like, band instantly were... like had us on their side yeah for some reason I don't away. even know what it was because like I wouldn't listen to them like outside of a live context I wouldn't really put their music on but I've definitely. Like, I would pay money to see them again. Yeah. Like, on their own, I would go and see them. They were really, really good. And they had, like, quite a lot of fans in the room and stuff as well, because they've been, they've been going a long time. Like, I heard of them for the first time probably about five years ago or something. It was ages ago. But I don't know why it's taken this long. I think just maybe because I just thought, oh, it's probably not going to be my bad. Thing, yeah. Not going to be for me. But I was just pretty drunk straight away. Like Katie says, they were so likeable. They had everyone in the palm of their hand pretty much straight away. People were singing the words back like the whole set pretty much the synth was really cool I yeah remember the synth the synth was like playing riffs with the guitar mm-hmm. and i remember being like That's I, I like that i love that and Thank i also you. liked he was dancing like yeah he had, he had yeah, little, like little hips yeah love that little dance moves <laughs> and it was good it was just good vibes it were a great band good songs um, and once again, would go and watch again all of the bands that we're talking about. Like, if you get a chance to go and see them, majority of them are like small bands that rely on people like just taking a chance on them. Um, and a lot of them as well, like, it was us taking a chance. Like, if we thought that we weren't going to enjoy it or something, we just went on a limb, just like, oh, well, might as well, got nothing better to do. And they've ended up being the best bands that we've seen this year. Next is um, more Glaswegians, mm-hmm. I think, aren't they? They are. Dead Pony. Oh, I love this band. I love Dead Pony. Um, we've seen them before. But Only once. Yeah, and also it was kind of not in the... Well, like, the venue was fine, but it wasn't... I wasn't at the front, and yeah. I wanted to be at the front yeah. for Dead Pony. I wanted the experience. <laughs> um, So we went to... Was it Gathering Sounds? We went to Gathering Sounds Festival, and, like, the rest of the lineup was, like, really strong, but Dead Pony was the reason that we, we bought, bought a ticket. ticket. <laughs> they... Uh, we were talking about this in a video we filmed earlier. They are they are as evil as Al Gore in terms of sound <laughs> for like what I can bear to listen to because like they are like they're a heavy band. Yeah. Like by some people's standards they're not, but I'm really soft, so like to me this is like the heaviest. They're like a rock band. Yeah. And like they're very like riffy and like dark. Oh, just yeah, it's dark and evil. But this is like if I can listen to it, then, like, it's not, it's it's not, not that bad, bad. Yeah. no. The lead singer, I think her name's Anna, she is just... What I feel a like woman. everyone who sees Dead Pony is like, who is that woman? Yeah, she's, she's on bail. Spellbinding. <laughs> she's, like, mesmerising. Her performance, she, her voice is amazing, obviously, that's the main fucking thing. Like, she, her voice is unbelievable and very, like in contrast to the sound the sound mm-hmm. is like dark and her voice is quite like it's quite bright yeah uh, like if you put it in a different context it would sound completely different, i imagine but... she's quite versatile in that you could put yeah. her in any band and it would work yeah but she also like a performance that she gives she always comes into the crowd i am me and Robin literally don't look, like... me, don't look at me don't look at me but also i can't stop looking <laughs> yeah. at her she's, she's unreal so cool. and the way that the guitarist writes is like he, he like plays loads of riffs and stuff but like manages to make it sound so full at the yeah. same time and it's just him and uh like he's the only guitarist on stage and it's just him and a bass player and I think it's just loads of effects he must just yeah. whack loads of effects but then I well. was looking and he didn't have like a big pedal board or anything mm. it was like a tuner plugged in the nose out it sounds mental though yeah like it sounds crazy so I don't know how he I manages to get that because it's some... not just a clean guitar no it's not I know they've got some track, but mainly the track is for like stuff that they can't Back and play. Yeah. And yeah, stuff that they can't play live. So yeah, yeah I don't amazing. know. But we will be going to see them again. Yeah, I know we will be as soon as we're able to. Yeah. Really, they're one of our favorite bands just in general. We've seen them twice now, um, but we listen to them all the time and talk about them all the time. So this next band are a band that, um, if you didn't know, we've just been on tour with Martha, and while we were on tour, we played with some other really cool bands who like opened the show, and this was night one yeah wasn't it in nottingham started um, strong started really <laughs> strong like all the bands that we played with were really good and we enjoyed them all but this just one in particular was more like to our tastes i suppose like just something that we would listen to and go and see like just because we want to rather than because they were on the bill or whatever and um, they're called brute alligators which is such a such good a name good, yeah. like such a cool band name 
Um, and they were just so sick. Like, they were really nice people as well. All of them were really nice. The songs were class. They were quite heavy, but, like, quite mathy and pop punky at the same time. Like, it's hard to kind of pin it down in there one wow. thing um but at the same time it really made sense for them to be on the bill with us and with martha like they kind of fit into a lot of different capacities i guess and they were just sick they were really so good they everyone in the crowd seemed to really enjoy it it was such a good way i think obviously we look at it quite fondly because it was like night one of yeah. the tour as well so we were just so excited that everything had just been so perfect all day um and it was just a really good start to the best thing that's ever happened to us really um and they were just really good i don't really know what else to say i remember feeling terrified to go on stage like i i was i didn't feel nervous about the tour at all like and not then, about playing yeah no yeah. yeah like not uh, that bit i knew we could do it and then they were on and i was like fuck yeah like, <laughs> we have to follow that yeah. and then we've got martha coming after us yeah. like i was terrified but yeah. Um, that I mean, that's a good thing to yeah. feel because that means you're playing with good people. Yeah. They played a song called What's Next. And I think, I don't know whether it, they said it was like their new single, like it was already released or whether it was like the next single that I they think were releasing. if it's the same one that we're talking about, I think it's next. Right. I think it's not out yet. It's, it's What's Next. It's What's Next. <laughs> so <laughs> true. But that, that was the standout for me yeah. in the whole set. So, um, yeah, I would definitely recommend. I think they're from London. Yeah. So not local to us, but if, if you're ever, if, I would like listen to them on Spotify and stuff because they were very good. They were very good. And I feel like they must, like, I mean, we weren't playing in London that night, so they must get yeah. around a bit, you yeah. know. Last one is Diluted Juice. I just love this gig. I look back on uh, that set with such fond memories. It was the perfect end. So we played, was that Twisterella as well? Yes. The same day we were talking about yes. with um, Little Quirks. And we decided that Diluted Juice were going to be the last band that we went to see that day because we I think they were just at like, fucked where we were fucked, not going to fucked up. I think <laughs> they were on at like nine o'clock or something, which is a really nice time. Yeah. I think like if you get a festival slot around like in the evening, then it's like before people are too tired or too pissed or whatever. But like yeah, I think it was about half eight, nine o'clock. Yeah, but it's not like too early where no one's going to be there yet. Um, and the room was absolutely heaving for them, and it was bouncing like mm. the they had the whole room dancing. If you've never heard of them before, they're um, it's not like the kind of stuff that we usually listen to. It's like a lot of brass, like I mean that's mainly what mm. it is, like brass and drums. The drummer is unbelievable. Yeah, they're like, how do you even explain it? Like what you know if you're on holiday and like if you're like walking through the streets of somewhere in Europe, like somewhere in Spain or something, and it's like sunny. And everyone's a little bit drunk. Yeah. And you're having a good time. Sangria everywhere. Yeah. And there's brass instruments playing. But there's also a really good beat to it. And there's a guy at the front that's hyped everyone Yeah, else. we've got a hype man there. Like, <laughs> it's so it's, fun. It's like chaos. Yeah. Total and utter chaos. But it's there just so like it's the kind of music that i listen to and i'm like how do you know where you are in this song because yeah. it's not like first <laughs> chorus first chorus like it's not like that it's just they're all playing crazy stuff on all brass instruments time, yeah. and the drums are going nuts and but they all know where they are like it's a song it's yeah. not they're not just being random like it's all very intentional it's i don't i, I don't, don't know do how it. to explain it and i don't know how they do it it's so impressive but yeah, they were. Yeah. They were. If you're up great. for like a bit of a party, mm -hmm. then go and see Diluted Juice. They're like the, the ultimate party band. Yeah, and it was a great way to end the day at Tristarella. Yeah, so yeah, They're great. I feel like they could play anywhere, and it would turn into a party. Yeah. It doesn't matter where you are, who you are, whether you listen to this or not, whether you like this or not. Like, it's just such good yeah. vibes. If you were standing still, you would be the biggest party people. Yeah, definitely. Like, you would be the weirdo yeah. in the room yeah. rather than the people. Well, give it at last well hope you enjoyed that let us know who you've enjoyed seeing the most um this year we've seen i i write mine down as i go and so far we're on the 15th of december and i've seen 153 bands that's so many this enough. year so in total we'll have definitely seen at least 200 um different bands who was the best person you saw this year let us know we we'll, might check them out next year yeah if we can and if you've seen anyone that we've mentioned let us know what you thought there's obviously a lot of people that like we've seen loads of times before who are like our favorite bands like especially local bands yeah that we haven't mentioned because it's like it's just obviously. gonna be the same people over and obviously. over again and um, make sure you subscribe like follow all of that stuff and we'll leave our music below if you click, the to that, click the bell click the bell bye sisters bye sisters <laughs> Love you, bye, bye.